Next part of the show. I'm basically I'm I'm gonna steal y'all's job for a minute. Just, You're allowed to. I've got three bets on the game. Okay. And I'm just gonna warn you now. I I borrowed inspiration from both of you. Okay. These. I just want to see. You know, I'm gonna give my best bets for the game, and y'all tell yeah. me if you think I'm smart, dumb, crazy, whatever. Let's start out with my my number one. And this is I I feel so strongly about this, and I think Jeff, you were similar on this, and that's my guy Rasheed Rice. I feel I think you took the yards. I'm taking Rasheed both. Rice over six and a half receptions. I took both. You did. Okay. Yeah. It it feel it feels of all the things that you could bet on this game, I feel so rock solid about this. Yeah. And I actually went back and looked at it. Since Thanksgiving, he's gone over that in six of nine games. Like the Chiefs, halfway through the season, they figured out this is the only guy right. other than Travis that we can trust. We're gonna feed him the ball. On top of that, they've averaged Three and four targets, three targets behind the line of scrimmage per game over that stretch and uh, uh, four targets per game within five yards of the line of scrimmage. So it's not even like Patrick Mahomes is targeting this guy deep down the field. I just feel so, so good that he's going to be a volume guy in this game. Yes. So the Niners are a defense that's very static. They line up and they do not move on defense, which is a really bad way to play Kansas City. You don't want to be a situation where Mahomes knows what you're doing, but also when you play so much zone as the Niners do, you find the holes in the zone, and Mahomes has no problem throwing the ball quickly. And Rice is his target. It's Rice and Travis Kelsey. Those are his guys. And I feel like we could see Rice in the 8, 9, 10 receptions. He's also second in the NFL in yards per, per excuse me, yards after the catch. So that's why I like his, his yards over as well. So I could see him catching the football, getting on field. Debo's one, by the way, and he's number two in the NFL. So I'm on Rice in this game. Um, look, I think the game's going to go a certain way. I wager that way. If it doesn't go that way, I'll lose a lot of money. So I feel pretty good, you know, comfortable with the way I think of the game will go. And do you think with the Niners, with their secondary being uh, suspect, you might see some more targets further downfield than, than you normally would? Not for Rice, for MVS, which is why I like the MVS longest reception wager. But Rice is not that guy. He's the guy that's going to catch the ball sort of in the slot, to mention behind right. the line of scrimmage Easy with the targets, screens. Yeah. Um, and Mahomes showed against the Ravens, he throws the ball quickly when he needs to. And we saw in 2022 when the Chiefs played the Niners and the game plan they had there to throw the ball quickly and get it out. Some of those uh, end of rounds count as receptions, right? Those little tosses, those little toss right. forwards do. Top so pass, yeah. there's ways to get him easy receptions that really might not equal yards, but to get him over that number. Tell me if this, the next one is recency bias, because we obviously just saw him do it against the Detroit Lions. Number two, I've got... Kyle Juszczyk over half a catch. Oh, we're, we're both, we're, we're we both love this one. Yeah. It feels, I mean, <clears throat> that feels like a lock. And I know, you know, he's, he, he isn't a lock to get a reception every game, but against this Chiefs pass rush, I just, it just feels like an easy outlet. I assume the Niners are going to be in big personnel a lot in this game. It, it feels like a guarantee. All, and, and I love the idea that if he catches one pass, I'm done when, worrying about this bet. Yeah. And you have to lay a little bit of juice on that. It was minus 140, it, yeah. 145, which yeah. is a, about the max. Most people feel comfortable laying on some of those wagers. Here's the thing. Sammy P brought this up on our podcast. I went and looked at it last mm -hmm. night when I wrote my article for Fox Sports. I mean, he's played the Chiefs 22 and 19. Four targets, three targets, three catches, three catches, over 30 yards of both those, and a touchdown in the Super Bowl. So, And the two, we noticed the Chiefs the last couple of weeks, especially playing off, right, off coverage, not letting teams beat him deep. How many passes Josh Allen behind the line of scrimmage? Ten. Lamar had a bunch as well. So that's the guy, right? That's yeah. juice in, in regular personnel, behind the line of scrimmage, a screen, something like that. And I think he's an opportunity to get that really quickly. Last one, Jeff. I'm going to follow your advice. I'm just going to bet on something I want to happen. I'm a <laughs> diehard LSU alum. Clyde edwards Hilaire, anytime touchdown, it's just good odds. Do I feel great about it happening? No, but I would be ecstatic for the guy. But Why you, not have some you fun? See a lot, you see a lot in this game, though. You get players who aren't necessarily scoring a bunch of touchdowns. In the, like, you see the off guys, like like so much focus on yeah. Pacheco, Rice, Kelsey, whoever else. Like A lot of times you get guys who aren't necessarily the most obvious ones scoring at any time or scoring a first time. So I don't mind that at all. Remember last year, Sky Moore scored a touchdown. Sure in the did. Super Bowl. Kadarius Tony scored a touchdown in the Super Bowl. You never know. And you never know. And but the thing about Kansas City too is their equal opportunity. If you are running hot, 
you will play football. So if Pacheco comes in and plays well, obviously, and Clyde Edwards-Hilaire comes in to, to spell him and Clyde Edwards-Hilaire is playing good football, they won't feel like, I got to put Pacheco right. in the goal line. They'll let, let, let Edwards-Hilaire do it. So I think it's a good – what'd you get? Plus the Plus thousand? 600. Oh, th- 600? It's, I mean, it, not great, but, like, I'll throw a little money on it. Why not? Like, you thought it'd be a little higher, right? For any time, it's probably about right, though. I, I, I think – He's, like, their eighth option – I, just, right. I can't wait to find out what Andy Reid, what the play call is, what food, what food is it going to be. McCall Hartman is plus 1,100. And McCall Hartman, in my opinion, has more of a chance to score a touchdown than Clyde Everhiller does. We don't tell him that. You yeah. Just, you, you, just, you just heard him. It's, it's fine. Look, I'm going to ride here. I'm gonna ride with my guy regardless because I need Clyde. This could be Clyde's last ride, I think, with Kansas City. So, let, I mean, let's get him in it, the end zone in the big game. Why it's not? It's not the podcast for this probably, but – LSU people, I don't think they ride. I don't. Anyone rides harder for former LSU players than like the former college players than LSU LSU fans do. Guilty as charged. You think LSU so? fans ride so hard for former LSU players? I mean, we could definitely do like a twenty minute segment on this. I I I willingly own it. Yeah, I, I've I never seen that. a fan base. Maybe I just follow a bunch of LSU people on social media. But y'all, like, ride hard for four miles. We're, we're getting in the weeds here. But I think anybody from that 2019 team also yeah. is just going to inspire a ton of loyalty maybe, from maybe LSU fans. Is. I guess what, what, I've, what I've found with LSU fans is I think they are the most, again, not the podcast for it, but we're, we're, we're there already. They are the most brutally honest fans about their team. They will... They will criticize their team and, and they will love on their team. They, they're, they're not rose colored. Oh, this, everything is great. And meanwhile, they're three and four or whatever. And oh, we're going to be like, they are as honest and critical and hard on their team as any fan base I've seen. But at the same time, when they're going well, they love their team and they're awesome. I love LSU fans. I, I hope my producers recognize how disciplined I'm being by moving off of this because. Two college football guys are on the show and they want to talk about LSU. I could do this all day. I just look, I mean, Clyde, disappointing first round pick. It didn't work out the way the Chiefs wanted it to, but if he could get in the end zone and Great. make me some money in the process, perfect. It would be wonderful. Okay, we got to get y'all out of here quickly, but it wouldn't be a gambling preview Super Bowl podcast without talking about the props. And Jeff, in particular, let's start with I hear maybe you have a strategy about the Gatorade prop, which I think is everyone's favorite every single year. So for years, the Gatorade tended to match the jersey color of the winner. So let me explain. So if you wear a white jersey, you're not often going to drink colors that would stay in your jersey. So like if you're drinking Gatorade, like an orange, red, yellow, it spills. It would stay in a white jersey, <laughs> red or orange or yellow. Doesn't it? So if you look at the winners, white jerseys tend to be blue and purple, which don't stain, clear, I think one year Tampa Bay won, but had or someone had someone had a white jersey with with orange. You look at the dark color winners. The Eagles had yellow, the Chiefs had orange. The dark color jersey winner tends to have like the ones that stain a little bit, and other ones have sort of the ones that don't stain. If that makes sense. I just again the thought that goes into this is incredible. Look at the the Patriots. I think looked up. They've won a lot of Super Bowls wearing white uniforms, and they all had blue for all of those. Uh, maybe Brady just likes the color blue. I don't know. But it tends to match pretty well. You, you didn't expect a Crayola color swatch. Uh, no, not quite. Here, did you? No, I wasn't. I am curious, though, Bear, like, this is a particularly, I think, um, it, it's a good Super Bowl for extracurriculars. Obviously, Taylor Swift is going to be in the yep. crowd. You can bet on, you know, over under five and a half times she's shown, which feels like an easy over, in my opinion. But it, with these these kind of novelty props, like, Clearly, there's a strategy for Gatorade yep. color. So, can you strategize this stuff beyond just going with your gut? No, I mean you can. Well, yes. In terms of the halftime shows and the anthems, you absolutely can. And there are people that will. There are people that have done deep dives on how long Reba McIntyre has taken to sing the national anthem, and like they have discovered, like she rips through the national anthem, and it's like a minute twenty, a minute twenty-two, one fifteen. Like, so I would not expect a a long national anthem. Like they've gone back to like the nineteen seventies with, with, with her singing in the it's anthem. Eighty-seven and a half. Those yeah, it, so yeah, that, and that seems like it still might be a little a, a little high. And then with the halftime show, there are people who like go back and, and look at old Usher playlists, like to see what song did he open with? What song did he close with? Like they're, they're, they're coming across like his old, his like, 
his, his, his like R&B type sets, like um, his first song was My Way. Sometimes it was Yeah. So it's like there are people that are hardcore in this. Now, again, you can't necessarily get ridiculously large limits in this, but these are the fun novelty bets with the Super Bowl that people like to make.